aligned in where we want to go. And that's a cleaner energy future for the life. We may disagree on how to get there and how fast we can do it, but there is no one who doesn't agree on the end point. That's a good thing, because as my great friend, navigator Nainoa Thompson says, if you keep your eyes on the horizon and are passionate and committed, you will get there. It is clear that Hawaii has a unique opportunity to transform our energy state at a system level. In other words, to transform our entire energy ecosystem. We have only to look around at the attendance at this conference, where not only the utilities are present, but also our regulators, our state and county policy makers, community leaders, our nonprofits, our business owners, and independent power producers, large landowners, energy management companies working with large customers, solar companies, wind companies, local biofuel producers, energy efficiency providers, technology companies, startups, you name it. Where else could you get so many and such a diverse set of interested parties together to solve energy issues in a comprehensive and holistic way. And as a key player in this energy ecosystem, we are anxious to play our part. Third, we all recognize that much of what Hawaii is trying to do is on the cutting edge of energy transformation in the nation. We already lead in rooftop solar integration, no other state in the union has 12% of their customers enjoying rooftop solar when the national average is a half of 1%. And while our engineers have stretched themselves to do it, we haven't done it alone. John Yoshimura of Solar City talked about the collaboration between Hawaiian Electric, Solar City, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Golden, Colorado, and the Electric Power Research Institute to test the capabilities of advanced inverters. It wasn't easy, nor did it always go smoothly among the partners, as you heard, but it did happen. I recall attending many national conferences during this period, where the solar industry was telling our electric industry that they had technology that could help us integrate more renewables and even further, to help make them a grid resource to help us. But no one seemed to be interested, and many of my colleagues were actually gearing up to fight. But this, maybe somewhat unlikely collaboration, resulted in the remote reprogramming of over 600,000 inverters in Hawaii to help with grid resiliency, a first in the nation but one which can be replicated elsewhere, and I'm sure will. And as you heard Matt McNeff and Jim Albert say, through this advanced inverter testing, we were able to raise the technical limit relating to transient overvoltage to 250% of the daytime minimum load from 120%. And where do we go from here on this front? more of the same. We need to work together to take advantage of advancing solar and grid technologies to figure out how to truly make rooftop solar a grid resource for the benefit of all. Storage would be next on my list. Just as the cost of solar has come down 70 to 80 percent in the last five years, I believe storage costs are poised to come down the cost curve next. And just as rooftop solar happened first in a big way in Hawaii, if storage is going to happen anywhere, it's going to happen first in Hawaii. So we need to continue to explore storage op options, not just for grid stability, but also for load shifting and optimization of renewable resources. And in the storage area, we are just beginning to explore and exploit the possibilities. 
and they can be proven here in Hawaii and deployed to the benefit of our customers. Here's where there's another clear direction we need to continue to pursue. You heard Alan say yesterday how important technology is to our plans. And you heard Luis Salaveria say how great an opportunity Hawaii has to build an entire energy sector. We have a very exciting technology accelerator here in Hawaii, and it's called Energy Accelerator. We need to do everything we can to support their efforts. I really appreciated what Doug said in his introduction, because frankly, um, it was Alan Oshima and I who talked last year about, wow, should we come to this energy conference? And when we looked at the agenda, we just said, you know what? We need to be there. We need to be here. It really is time for all of us to engage, and to engage not only substantively, but on a much deeper level.